Knowing about the weather is important for everyone, especially for pilots. That's why there's an internationally standardized system for reporting current meteorological conditions, METARS. In this video, I'll show you how to decode and interpret a METAR. So let's start with some examples. These are typical METARs and you may already notice a pattern. The sequence of information is always the same. So let's take a close look at the structure and some abbreviations in more detail. One quick note, there's slight variations between countries on how they issue the reports. We will just focus on the basics for now. The first section are the so-called identification groups, starting off with METAR, followed by the ICAO four-letter location indicator of the airport of observation, in this case Lima Oscar Whiskey Whiskey for Vienna. The second part is the date and time. The first two numbers give you the day in the month of issue the other four, the hours and minutes of observation in Zulu time, which is Coordinated Universal Time or UTC. In this example, it is the 8th of the month, so in my case it's the 8th of July, and it was issued at 0720, so 7.20 in the morning UTC time. The second section is for the surface wind. The first three numbers are the mean wind direction in degrees true, rounded to the nearest 10 degrees. It is followed by the mean wind speed of the last 10 minutes in knots, or meters per second, indicated by the letters at the end. Five zeros mean that the wind is calm. Variable means that the wind is from variable directions, usually with less than three knots. In case of gusty winds, the maximum wind speed in a gust is also reported, like in this case, with the wind from 260 degrees at 16 knots, gusting to 28 knots. And if the wind direction varies by more than 60 degrees, it is reported after the general wind direction and speed with both extremes of the wind direction written with a V for variable in between. The next section is for visibility. The prevailing visibility reported in meters, or if the meta reports it with four nines, it means the visibility is greater than 10 kilometers. This is the present weather section, and this one is important. It reports significant present weather, and there's lots of different phenomena. Let's take a closer look. The section starts off with the intensity or proximity of the phenomenon. A minus in front stands for light, no qualifier means moderate, and a plus stands for heavy. VC stands for in the vicinity, so not directly overhead the airport. It can be followed by a descriptor like BC for patches, SH for showers, or TS for thunderstorms. See the full list on screen now, or under the link in the description. The next part is precipitation, like DZ for drizzle, RA for rain, or GR for hail. Again, the full list is on screen now. Visibility reducing phenomena are reported after that, like BR for mist, FG for fog, or HZ for haze. And lastly, there's space for everything else, like DS for dust storms, or FC for funnel clouds like tornadoes. So in this case, the airport is reporting heavy showers of rain, mist and dust storms. A very realistic combination of weather, for sure. The next section is for clouds, and for this we need to first take a look at how clouds are reported on METARs. Imagine an observer on the ground looking up, he will see a circular part of the sky. Cloud covers are reported in eighths, called octas, of this circle. If there's no clouds below 5,000 feet above ground, or MSA, whichever is higher, and no CBs or TCUs, it is reported as nil significant cloud. 
for automatic stations, NCD for no clouds detected is also used. If there's one to two octaves covered, it is reported as few, followed by the height of the base of the cloud in hundreds of feet above ground. Scattered is three to four octaves, broken five to seven octaves, and overcast is the sky fully covered. So in our example, we have one to two octaves covered with a base of 6,000 feet and five to seven octaves covered with a base of 8,000 feet. And in case of CB, so cumulonimbus or TCU, tower and cumulus clouds, the cloud type is also mentioned at the end of the section. Instead of the visibility, present weather and cloud sections, CAVOK can also be reported. It stands for Ceiling and Visibility OK, but there's some criteria that have to be fulfilled. Visibility needs to be 10 kilometers or more, no CBs and no cloud below 5,000 feet above ground or minimum safe altitude, whichever is higher, and no significant weather. The next one is really easy, with just a temperature and dew point split by a slash. And if there's an M in front of the number, it is in negative degrees Celsius. The temperature is followed by the pressure section that reports the current Q and H. A Q before the four numbers means that it is in hectopascals, and A means it is reported in inches of mercury. And now comes the fun part the trend forecast section. Let's start off easy. A no sig at the end stands for no significant change and it is used when there is no significant expected change within the next two hours. If there is a change expected, there's a differentiation made between a permanent change and a temporary one. Tempo is used for changes that are forecasted for a limited period of time, becoming for a change that is forecasted to last. And they can be more detailed by providing a time at, from, or until when it is applicable. And after all that is established, the changes are reported in the same format as we discussed before. In this example, the sky will be temporarily overcast at 1200 feet, and the wind will become 250 degrees at 27 knots. And those were all the main and most important sections of a METAR, so you should be able to decode and understand most of them now. It's important to note that I skipped a few things like less commonly used abbreviations and sections, or ones that require more previous knowledge. However, the decoding document of the World Meteorological Organization linked in the description will cover everything for those interested. As usual, if you have any questions or feedback, please just let me know. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.